Hey, welcome everyone to the Agency Sessions. I'm Jason Fisher, and we decided to unveil our vision to Omaha with some of the best and brightest minds in the community to be able to build a narrative around how we're going to build this content creator hub, one of the first of its kind here in Omaha. We've been cooking up this idea for years, and now it's time to involve you, the listeners. This podcast is your backstage pass to the journey from the freshest voices to the classic minds, agency unites us all. Join us from a what if to we will. These are the agency sessions igniting your creativity and inspiring action. Buckle up. Um, so I know who you are, but I don't know if everybody else knows who you are. Uh, give me your name. Give me uh, some of your background. Uh, just just the, the, the introduction, how to okay. allow you to introduce yourself. Awesome. So thank you again for having me. Absolutely. This is really awesome. Um, so hello, everyone. I am Aaron Darrell Gregory, um, native Omaha, Nebraska. Um, but I am a multitude of different things. Um, I would say I am a art and culture professional. Um, so I work full time at Omaha Performing Arts as a community engagement manager. Um, I've been there for four years, only a couple months in this new role. Um, and then outside of that, I am a dance professional or what I like to personally call a DCE, dancer, choreographer, educator, where I am working with um, dancers of all ages in the Omaha community um, nationally as well. You know, I still have friends in other cities that I connect with and may give experience to um, but yeah, I'm just trying to help develop a dance scene here in our city, whereas still paying attention to the trends of what's happening in the dance world. So that's pretty much it. There are a lot of other things, but that's the, that's literally where I start right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know you wear a lot of hats and I have seen uh, some of your dance. Um, I've seen some of your work through uh, Steelhouse and, and through the Omaha Performing Arts and the list goes on. But as soon as I see someone pop up my timeline, especially here in Omaha, it's a person of color in the arts. And especially for the culture, I'm kind of like, if I haven't seen them yet, I'm like, where have they been at? And so you had been traveling all over the world doing your magic and working everything creatively. And so what's a few, what's a few places that you tell me about that journey a little bit shortly so I can give people context of like you yeah. know, who you are and what you yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I left, Omaha, um, right after high school mm -hmm. and I went to Morehouse college in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I graduated Congrats. class of 2011. Um, I got my bachelor's in sociology mm -hmm. and I started dance there. Um, professionally I started dance there, um, learning the different styles of ballet, modern jazz, West African shout out to Spelman dance theater and the Spelman dance department. Yes. All of my wonderful instructors there. Um, including my dance mama, sister, Amela Kakumba. I miss you. Love you. See you at homecoming. Um, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> and then um, that took me to, well, let me be very clear. God led me to um, New York City um, where I, uh, I had uh, earned a scholarship, the Bill and Gates Melinda, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Millennium Scholarship. You too? Um, Mm -hmm. No, I'm kidding. I'm about to I say, wait, what? I did not get that at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <So> go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, so I earned that scholarship in high school. Congrats. And they, thank you. They paid for all of Morehouse and then they I, they <sighs> sent me to NYU. So okay. they paid for half of NYU because the grad program is a little st more structured. Um, but NYU also was expensive. So I ended up getting my master's um, in dance education from okay. NYU Steinhardt. Right. Um, and yeah, so That's I massive. did a lot. Thank you. Yeah, I did a lot of teaching um, within after school programs and studio work and private studios, public studios, um, performances. I've literally almost every full gamut of dance you can think of. OK, um, I've been able to be a part of. Right. Um, and then another, another fun place that I've gotten to go was definitely Italy. Mm. Um, I did a uh, dance intensive out there um, with one of my former professors. Um, from Spellman, um, she and her partner at the time, they led this group and they took us out to Sorrento, Italy. And <sighs> it's tough. so that was great for, to be out there for two weeks and to dance in the amphitheater and to see Rome and to dance in the streets and things like that was really awesome. So 
Okay. Okay. Next time you need a camera guy, you know, <laughs> capture the magic. You know, know, back then it was different. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like that was, was 2013, 10 years ago. Like Shoot. social media was, wasn't was as know. active as it is now. We no. have pictures, but not as many videos as you do video content now. And I mean, in that kind of full circle, that comment right there brings us full circle of like, what is happening in this world of uh, pre-pandemic, the evolution of the, the content creators and the social influencers. And I think even the term social influencer at, at now and past tense, you know, if you were to say who was a OG social influencer, those are people that were on TV or on a, on a channel on something Mm -hmm. else on that was not the internet because it wasn't viewed that way. No. Um, and then there was a shifting point that, uh, I, I know it happened pre pandemic, but the pandemic really put it over the top on how these people shaped uh, culture, media, entertainment, um, just every facet of things. We just became enamored with these uh, different stories, these short videos, all the things, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, something, you know, as, as I'm sure you may say, God's plan brought you back. And, um, you know, so it's interesting because I had a a little journey myself, not nearly as interesting. I got to go, I did get to go to the Netherlands, but it was only for a week. So, I mean, but it was for work. So that was good. But I mean, it's interesting because I've lived in LA. I've lived in Houston for about three years. I've lived in LA for about a year and, um, traveled, you know, plenty of, plenty of spaces and places, you know, New York, just all over the place. And you come back with a sense of, the blank slate. I don't want to say blank, but I felt like I was, um, and, and, I, and I'm kind of curious to see your take on it. I felt like I was coming back to Omaha after you see all those things. I felt like I was kind of coming into a startup company. Mm. Like it had a lot of potential to take off. Oof. Right. But it needed some work. Yes. And, but because Omaha was not already in New York, New York has a lot of the infrastructure in there, a lot of what it is and what makes it New York. Omaha had the bubblings and the happenings and the trappings of what it could be, but it hasn't really fully evolved, which is kind of a good thing. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, for me, I felt like then we could, we could take bits and pieces from things that worked really well Yeah. and do that. So what's, what's your thoughts? I mean, when you came back, I mean, they, 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 Got you back somehow. I don't know how, but I don't know how many zeros were behind there, but it not was, enough. There were no zeros. <laughs> that, no that's zero. why I came back. Cause there were no zeros. There were um, no zeros. Oh. To be, yeah. yeah it, to be very honest. Um, okay. which, I mean, in these situations, I'm always an open book. Cause you never know 100%. how you can, you know, your story can help someone else. Right. Sure. Cause they believe it's something that it's not until they hear the real. Exactly. Authentic. Um, yeah. So I left New York in 2016. Um, I kind of felt like it was my time to go, but coincidentally I had developed asthma a year prior and I had like close to eight asthma attacks within that time frame. Um, the last one in 2016 literally almost took me out of here. Um, oh, and at that moment, my mom was like, so when are you leaving New York? Because <laughs> we just couldn't figure out what my triggers were. Um, okay. So upon me leaving. Got a support system. Yeah. yeah. I, I decided like, okay, am I going to go back home? Am I going to go to LA or am I going to go to Atlanta? And I chose to go back to Atlanta because I figured I know people there. I could still, excuse me. No, you're fine. I could still dance there. Um, and it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Mm. It was not fine. Um, going back to Atlanta the second time around was like hell in a handbasket. I just uh, had ch- things changed and adult massive. Atlanta is not the same as college Atlanta. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, because right. there's a bubble. Yeah, there's different there's, bubbles. Exactly. Okay, that there's makes a, sense. Mm-hmm, so that makes sense. There's a, a whole new world of Atlanta that I hadn't experienced before, and then I also was being just kind of directionless, aimless. Mm. I didn't really. I knew I wanted to dance, but I wasn't working hard enough to make sure that I could take classes and putting myself in those areas. And I also, I was in my late twenties and I just, I just feel like your late twenties is a very, depending on what you're doing in your life is a very pivotal time because you're just still trying to figure out who yeah. you are, what you want to do. Mm. And I, it was just it was a, a mess. Lot. It was a lot, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember having a therapist at the time. Um, I'll never forget. He was just like, you know, Aaron, it's okay. 
to, he was a black therapist, shout out to Chris. Uh, she's mm-hmm. like, Aaron, it's okay to go home. And I just remember sitting, I was literally sitting on this tile floor because I was upset. Sometimes mm-hmm. in my thinking, I, I ask, can I do a handstand? Can I do this? I'm like, I'm right, doing weird right. things to get, yeah. get my brain going. And I was sure. literally sitting on the floor mm-hmm. with my arms folded like a, ch- a child that got put in timeout. <laughs> and mm. I ac- accepted the, I, the, the idea in October of 18 that I needed to return home to just recalibrate. Mm. And to get myself in order and whatever that looked like, I didn't know, but I knew I needed to go back home. Okay. And I wasn't widely received. Well, I'll say that my family, half of it was excitement. The other half was like, what the hell are you going to be doing here? Because we can't help you. We can't take care of you, all this type of stuff. But I Mm. knew that God had sent me home for a reason. Mm -hmm. And shortly, literally shortly, but then a month's time. Well, I came the day before my 30th birthday, which is April 2nd. Okay. And we had laid my grandfather to rest because he had Mm. passed a couple months earlier, but they waited to have his services upon me coming home so I could be here for that. And I remember looking out in the field at the National Cemetery. He was a a veteran in um, the Air Force. And I remember looking out into the cornfields, how symbolic. (laughs) Mm. And I just heard God so loudly in my spirit say, there's opportunity here. Mm. And he was not wrong. Within a month's time, the connection started happening. The stability started working. Healing started happening. And here we are four years later. I knew it was a God move because you couldn't tell me that I would be thriving in my Mm. hometown. Mm. Of all places, being a dancer, being an arts professional in a space where the culture is not where it could be where it's still kind of behind, where the community isn't as connected as it could be. I have been positioned and charged and assigned a role to help create experiences and bring people together in a way that I never experienced myself doing or Mm -hmm. visioned myself doing. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's truly a blessing to be home. You know what I'm saying? I always have love for Omaha. Do I want to settle here? Absolutely not. Uh But I'm here until it's time to go on to the next place. Indeed, indeed. And I appreciate you sharing that journey with me. I knew bits and pieces of it, but didn't know the whole thing. And I'm over here. I'm, I'm not going to cry. No, it's I'm not going to cry. But gosh, so powerful because at the same time, it comes to like feeling for you sharing that is, is that uh, God's plan on top of that. But uh, I feel like, you know, and I, I still, I'm like one of these people on the, I think about it. I don't think it was Omaha as a stock, but I mean, if it was a stock, which in, you know, sense of there, taking stock in, in something, someone, uh, something, I feel like being a person of color, being a black person right now in Omaha is a valuable asset. And especially if you got some experience to come back and share the wealth, which you've been doing, yeah. you know, um, and, and, and I've stuck in here. I've been back since about 2008, right before the, the housing crash. Mm. Um, and I'd left from LA back. So I've been back since like maybe 2002, 2003, and then went to LA and had traveled and came back and then, you know, just back and forth and such. But I say all that to say is like, I've, I've hung in there and, you know, waited for other people to kind of, kind of uh, merge together. And I, at the same time, find those, those people who are like minded. And, uh, so it came to the conclusion years later, like, uh, had a lot of ideas on how to do that. Um, I'm not necessarily a teacher. I'm self-taught in this. I went to school for engineering, Oh wow! but it, I stumbled into this because I've always, it's always been the arts that has been, you know, for me. And that's been my, my saving grace. And so hearing your story, hearing other people's story that we talked to, I realized that there's a lot of kind of this idea of giving back. And at the same time, it has to be sustainable. And, uh, you know, and, and it also was uh, this generational gap that I realized. So kind of this cultural generational thing that was happening. And I couldn't figure out like how to connect these dots. And it was right there in front of me. And uh, so the idea was, um, and, and I may have shared this with you, that Ben Gray, we, we mm-hmm. spoke about him. He had this show for 30 years, the original, one of the original social influencers of his time for 30 years though. I mean, most social influencers don't last a year these Mm -hmm. days. (laughs) Not at all. Right. And so he kind of had this thing, but 
the narrative for younger generations for voters was that he was just a politician. They had no idea who he was because that's all they knew him as because they were too young to know who he was unless they were like 50 or older. And so I said, Ben, you know, where's all the, where's all the shows at? And he started looking around and then he started asking around about other people that he knew that were in journalism and had, you know, other shows that were um, on tape and none of them were online. I mean, Mm. the Washington branch library is named after a gentleman who was another journalist. Um, And it blows your mind when you're thinking to yourself, like there is no, there's no library. There's no, nothing is accessible, not even a book, not even Mm. an analog paper book about these people. But you know, it's not really about Ben, it's about the culture. If you're thinking like, and when you go back and I seen glimpses of these videos, it blew my mind. I said, we got to get these on like digitized and put online. And then I said, okay, well, that's good. But then how do we get the next generation? And as yourself kind of doing these classes and these workshops of being able to kind of get this ideology out and, 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 and encourage other dance, encourage that culture and fanning that flame of growth. It was the same thing as I said, how do we do this? And I said, it's, it's in our, it's been in our hands the you know, the device of how people create culture and connect with culture is our phones. Mm -hmm. And that's journalism. I mean, it's any tool that you want it to be. It's journalism, it's art, it's video, it's, you know, written, it's, you know, it's any tool that we want it to be. And I, and, and I thought to myself like, okay, if we are to take dance, for example, and then we have someone who wants to capture that in video, whether it's with their phones, with a regular camera, whatever the case may be, we just need something that feels familiar to them. So let's build a space and a place for content creators. Yeah. You know, and that's, that was kind of the aha moment for me to get it full circle to encompass all the culture, all the things. Um, so we had a, we had a discussion on that. That was my aha moment is like (laughs) how we connect all the things, because again, that's just the outlet. What I'm curious to think, you know, hearing about that from, you know, when we discussed it a little bit and reflected on a little bit, what's, what's some of the things that, that, you know, come to mind when you think about a space or a place like that? Cause you brought up a lot of things that I never even thought about. (laughs) Yeah. Um, it's so funny because you mentioned that I think about, now this person just came up to me who I know and I've worked with that I even think of I don't know if you know her do you know Jade Rogers of course okay I'm about to say of course she is the Omaha black historian like she knows all that information you know what I'm saying all those hidden gems and how to find it and where it's preserved anybody that needs to feel I'm saying like she will help identify that right yeah um, but as far as spaces she's the griot right it's literally the griot yeah. yes um so you said spaces that remind the question one more time oh sure. yeah just just a space like you know agency if there was an actual space for content creators mm. that connected you know a lot of the dots what, what do you imagine that would look like or what's anything around that um you know i i think it has to be a space that it has to be a hub mm-hmm. where Preferably, I would love for the hub to be in North Omaha. Yep. We have accessible, everything right? accessible, you know what I'm saying? And not to say that, well, no, uh, obviously African-Americans need to be, they yeah. need to know what's in their, their in hometown and everything mm-hmm. can't just be where the shiny new places are. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. we can create shiny new places where we are. You know what I'm saying? We have, for example, 24th Street as is being revitalized. I have this weirdest thing that when I talk for a long period of time, I yawn. I'm not you're, tired. I no, promise. you're fine. You're I'm just fine. Like, Yo, this is so crazy. And then I'm sitting here. Uh, you're getting oxygen. Man. I, I, apparently, because I'm like, ooh, lower. But um, 24th Street is being revitalized in such a beautiful way that you have like Miss Terry Sanders with the Omaha Star. Mm-hmm, you have mm-hmm. the Great Plains, yes, um, Black History Museum, yes. Um, but Union. to have another space where you can go to. create your content to talk about these things. Like I can envision, and I know there's going to be a space there right on the corner 24th soon by North end teleservices. Um, But let's say that there was room on the other side for a space where 
these young professionals could come in and they they have a room like this where they're talking about exactly. stuff that matters. I think about like it is so crazy. I don't know how this came up on Twitter, but Cedar's World. Okay. Um, yeah. You got yeah, Teen yeah. Summit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, those yeah, yeah, yeah. those type of things. And everything oh isn't gosh. always about like super serious stuff, but stuff like again, yeah, stuff that matters to our these kids. Yeah. They're getting on at home making these TikTok and getting these followers and these conversations for free yeah. when they can really be getting in a space that allows them to create their own world that they want to do and build, rebuild those ecosystems for themselves. Um, so they would have the production studios inside of it. They would have um, whatever they need to make their content. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know how that is continued to be shaped, Yeah, but because obviously everyone is going to have so many different options. You know, you have your goth kids, your sports kids, sure. your fashion kids, your yeah. social like, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be, it's, it's too vast. It's the but buckets. It's right? the buckets, but yeah. you would definitely have, you know, I think something similar to where they can, in, 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 in sorry, in an internal space where they yep. can go and build and create and edit and produce. But for me, I also think that the world is, our main space of content creation. I literally just put out a TikTok the other day because um, I have my molds where I feel like I'm the old man talking. So I, <laughs> Uncle Aaron is what I'm calling that personality. Nice. Nice. Uh, and I literally just said, these are for my creatives, especially my young creatives. So many of you are, or so many of us, because I fall into it too sometimes, are relying on social media to be our inspiration. And then we're going and mimicking what we're seeing and then trying to out-viral that thing. No, if you are a real artist and a real creative, you're living. Because art is a way of life. Sure. And art is supposed to imitate life. So if you're not living, then how are you going to, that's, life is supposed to inform your art. So, mm -hmm. yes, having a space where you can go make it, but you also need to take steps outside literally go outside and live experience go try something new go to a museum go to a game go to the park like that's yeah. where inspiration is just waiting and it's and but we we give too much of our energy to our phones sure instead of using them as the tools that they are we go create memories exactly right? and then go from there and, and build then build there, your right? yeah because that's that's where the 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 good stuff excuse me the good stuff comes from some of the most viral things that have come out have been the most sudden unintentional moments you know what i'm saying like that you didn't and expect you can't to make, happen yeah and those people that try to make those up and try to cajole those things and yeah sure you can get a couple of likes or that and everything out of it but you know at what cost right exactly um, but i couldn't agree with you more so Going on what you're, you know, what we've kind of both realized is like having a space like this, I think the way I imagine it is you just tell them go have fun mm -hmm. and, and you have some professional creatives around them to kind of find out and get from them there. So, and then help them create and have mm -hmm. fun. They're going to automatically find all the lighting and cameras and everything else that they may not know about, but they can come, like you said, tell their story. They can talk about what's relevant to them. And they can create their own world. But the the cool thing is, is they're going to be learning and you can, you know, you can have a Jade Rogers, you can have a, you can have a Ben Grant, other people who are the griots who have lived. Then all of a sudden it's history. They don't call it history, yeah. but you're going to be feeding them all this stuff and you're going to have workshops and you're going to have curriculum around it. And, and the next thing, you know, all of a sudden there's that, that connection that they were missing. They had no idea that, yourself or me or Ben or Jade or these other people even existed and at what level they lived. Yeah. Because when we hear those stories, I mean, I think that's all you and I lived for is, you know, at a time where our elders would share the stories because they weren't online. You had to just wait till you get to the family gathering, you know, and then all of a sudden you'd hear the stories and you're like, what uncle so-and-so got shot one time at, you know, at this club. And it, yeah, sure. It was that, or my grandmother went and d every Sunday she went tirelessly. My great grandmother did. And she would always, instead of, you know, everybody's in the animal shelters, but she believed in humanity. Mm. And so what she would do is, is she would constantly have someone who was with down syndrome or something like that couldn't believe it. So I was like, that's where I get it from. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, what else, I mean, is there anything else even beyond this with agency that you want to see from Omaha? What is Omaha missing 
why you know what's broke and uh how do we fix it Aaron? <laughs> get your list out right i just pulled out a list and shook it you there know you go. um man what's the what's the top of the top of the list of, of a few things the the top of the list for or me, core things yeah is it's we really need like omaha black omaha needs a table, a community table where people are constantly feeding each other. Um, we can build all these things. I've seen and heard of things go up and go down because the community is not together. Mm. And I firmly believe that they're like, you can build a structure all you want, but if you don't have any life in it, mm. that's going to support it then it's just going to be another abandoned thing space and place and yeah. space and place. And mm. so it's the relationships. Like there's a lot of history in our city that is stopping people from coming together. There's it's a appealing. weird, it, it is a very weird energy or spirit realm or something that where sure. black people and don't get me wrong. Like in other cities, Yes, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody rocks together. Like, but I love how in Atlanta specifically, you have some there's something for everybody. There's mm -hmm. the you got something for the 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 black um I was going to say I don't know why the word parishioners were coming up, but you know what I'm saying, <laughs> but the, the our church folk, right? Right. Your black intellectuals, your hoteps, your right. jocks, your entertainment sure. folk, your you know what I'm saying, your community the service of folk. Yes. It's, it's not a monoculture, no. right? Yeah. Right, but here I felt like you're almost kind of forced to be one. But then there are people who break out of that and the people who break out of that get ostracized. Oh, you think you better. Or there everyone's trying to um be that one. And it was funny, mm. um a friend of ours um talking with her, she had said this one day, and I just thought it was so crazy because it was true. Um, so I was like, it's amazing that our initials for Omaha is O and E, because everyone's always trying to be the one. And she's like, Is that where I am? Andrea Joy. She's like, Is that where I am? The what? Yeah. Uh, 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 in the oh, land yeah, yeah, of yeah, ones. Yeah, she did say, yeah, right. Yeah, land of ones. The land of ones. Everyone yeah, does say that. Yeah, yeah, everyone's trying to be the one. But at the same time, within the black culture, even if you are the one, you still are the bottom when it comes to the other people. Sure. To the other cultures. They mm. still see you as not a part of the table. There you go. So what's the point of the table? Right. right? That's, I love that. Building your own table. I mean, I got it. But you saying not, you know, having being a part of someone else's table, they still, you know, other groups, other yeah, cultures yeah. will look at you. And it's okay. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's okay. There's room for all of us to eat. Man. That's the one thing that I've learned it's that I that take with me about our HBCU life is like, there's room for all of us. We all Abundance are different. mindset versus what do they call that? This is a crab uh, in a scarcity. Bear. Oh, scarcity. scarcity. Exactly. Scarcity. So there is abundance versus scarcity. Mm -hmm. No, a hundred percent. Keep going. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a crab in a barrel mentality. Remember, I, I remember when I learned about that in college, like that's my hometown. Mm. Crab in a barrel. There's not room for people to go up, and it, mm. unless you're not intentionally stepping on toes, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, but the people who, who do do intentionally step on because oh, I got I got to do this, or they did this, so I'm gonna make it up and blah blah blah. Sure. Like, I think about um, a dear friend of mine um, locally who you know we've known each other for a couple of years now. I call her my cousin, um, but we ain't related. But blood can make <laughs> us closer. Sure. Um, you know, she opened a studio with a very niche style of dance mm. that is traditional to the to black culture, to HBCU culture. And she's the only pure, I'm just going to say, I was trying not to put yeah. together. Is that okay? Oh, Please okay, do, okay. yeah. Um, shout out to Shakita, Shakita yeah. O'Neal, knew some hey cousin. Um, yeah. And her studio, iHeartB Dance, she yeah. has the only pure majorette studio in Man. the city. Wow. And all the other community teams because J setting, not even J setting, but cause that's the name of her. She's a traditional J set, um, captain from, um, JSU. Okay. And she's like a legendary, like you can YouTube her and there are literally okay. volumes of videos wow. about her and her time. The legendary Man. Shankita. Okay. And like this woman has class, she smile. has grace and she has a legacy behind her. And, you know, she's pouring into these young women and yet you have these people trying to duplicate what's hot about the dancing, but they don't got the technique to go into there it. You go. And that's 
it's a very similar thing that I've seen in Omaha. You got people yeah. like there are so many restaurants that could be dope, but because somebody has a negative attitude about it, you tear down their reputation. You know what I'm saying? Like we lost some great restaurants that were here forever. <laughs> For, you got Skeets, you got Jim Ribs Haven. Yeah. But Mr. C's was gone a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Joe all Tess, like all those classes where we used to yeah. go and meet yeah. and congregate. Is this, they're just, they're fizzling out. And it's like, what, like the, but yet people are spending buku money to go out of town. hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like, so oh. yeah, how do, how do we, so, I mean, I see the same things that you see. And I think that it, there is kind of a, a building your own table. And it seems like now that I think there's a, there's a generational shift that now we can connect with people like yourself and others and like-minded folk, folks to where, it, it is, a t it's starting to emerge. Yeah. You get a joy, you get a self, you get other people, you get even people outside of uh, the black community that want to see yes. you thrive. So there's and room for them too. There's room for y'all too. hundred <laughs> percent. There's um, room. And that's, and that's what I thought about agency is that like at first I was kind of like, oh, okay, it's focused on blackness, but we want all groups of people to learn and thrive and understand around blackness because and that's the culture, yes. right? I heard the one of the most dopest things. I listen to a, it, a, a, po a podcast, <laughs> yeah. um, Hold for Maintenance. Um, I don't know them personally, but shout out to Lene, OBO, Jones, and okay. uh, Sima Sim. All they right. were talking about um, like others supporting us mm -hmm. and how when it comes to, you know, black people, like we can't just save ourselves. Mm. Like we need help from our other communities. We, we well, need like because they have the structure, they have sometimes the privilege power to get us into those spaces. And it's better if we work together instead of like, no give me not this. I know this seems counter counterpoint to what we just said about, you know, creating your own table, but at the same time, invite those people in. Cause I've sure. seen businesses go down the drain because people don't have the well, business. The, the numbers acumen. aren't there. The, the numbers aren't there. I mean, not here in Omaha, we're not in Atlanta. Right. So then the mathematical numbers, if we create a black utopia, this isn't Wakanda. No, you know, Atlanta might be Wakanda cause you got enough black folks. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, and it was filmed there, but neither here nor there. There you go. There you go. I knew it looked familiar. Um, I was like, I went shopping by there one time. And, and so the interesting thing is the numbers aren't here. So especially Omaha specifically, if you build any type of business or organization, if it doesn't have any type of other outside influence or connection to, it's not going to survive, yeah. period. So sure, it's rooted in blackness. It's surrounded with blackness. And you will get people who just want to see you thrive and survive, you know, not just survive, but thrive. Absolutely. And I just want to add to, because yeah. I don't want this to be, you know, to come off as an Omaha bashing session. No, it's, it's not. not it's what not. is that? You know what I'm saying? Like I can appropriately and accurately <laughs> express and see the deficits that we have as a there community. But I also, if you know, if you, you know, y'all go back and y'all listen to this, don't be chopping this up, but put me on social right. media saying he's here. No, right. no, there's opportunity. The God himself told me that there's opportunity here. I've seen it. I've been able to help create it, yep. but there has to be people who are willing to see it change. 100%. And that I truly believe that Omaha is a comfortable city where if you shake up that comfort, that's what gets the crabs. Yes. So 100%. no change. You change is constant. You can't. We're gonna grow. It's so easy to be comfortable and not be challenged to see something different or to try something new. And I think that's why people get scared and jealous because someone's doing something new that they didn't think of first or they didn't have the idea to get the. I've had these I conversations. Think it's just ingrained in them. I yeah. think it's just ingrained in a lot of folks. What I've realized is. is generationally what has happened is because we haven't had the opportunities and that in the case may be, it becomes a self-defense mechanism. I don't feel like it's intentional, but after a while it becomes like a, just a knee jerk reaction of what is that person doing? Why are they doing it? And, or how can I do the same thing and do it better and do, you know, but I like the inspirational. I love some competition. I love those things. And it was really scary to put agency out here, but I said, if I don't, it will never take off. So Absolutely. I got to set it free. And I'll tell you what, if anybody takes the idea and does it better, I would be mission accomplished mm. because I fortunately believe in abundance mindset yeah. and it wasn't meant to be God's plan and other thing else. Mm -hmm. If there was some other journey that I needed to take and I've seen it happen. Yeah. And sometimes it's kind of, uh, 
uh, dodge the, uh, not block the blessing, but kind of block the part to where I wasn't supposed to do that. Exactly. Even though it felt very right, it was not the right direction for me at the time. But I go with the flow. I've seen that. And I'm not challenging anyone to take the idea, so please don't take it. <laughs> but I am saying that it's going to take a lot of us. And I've ran across people like yourself, Paul Allen, Joy, all the people who believe in abundance mindset and are putting their gifts out there. And I realize, like, it's it's crazy to say, but I have to say this on here, is that the money that's coming through North Omaha, that's three, four hundred million dollars plus in this day and age. Only if we unify, as we see our South Omaha brothers and sisters doing, if we unify, then we can have the infrastructure because we're building places and spaces or other people are building places and spaces. But building our people and our infrastructure and our collaboration is limited. And the things if it's if it's big enough for you to do by by oneself, you're not dreaming big enough. Absolutely. Right. So the same thing goes for myself and others that it's going to take about 10, 20, a hundred ideas of these great like-minded, you know, individuals in different sectors to come together and build, whether it's agency or something bigger than ourselves. And then, then it's a space and a place that can influence and can grow other people and ideas. But that is, you know, I couldn't agree with you more is that seeing those folks out here who are just, they don't even know why if you sat down and you asked them, it is just learned behavior. Yeah. And I don't think they're doing it intentionally. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I have all the same ideology about, and I'd have to do a whole, whole other podcast around uh, the gatekeepers, mm. you know, and the ideology. And I really want to ask people, I, I'll put it out there, but we'll, we'll talk about this later, is do you really believe that these were the best and brightest of a generation? that they just don't want to see you succeed or do they realize that they're bearing a burden of information, wisdom, and knowledge that they're scared to let out of the bag or they're not sure that maybe that person's ready to hear. Um, I have my, my thoughts on that, but all the different combinations that stop us from uh, as a black culture, really being able to get past these huge deficits um, are just such a, such a mind blowing thing, but it's right there. Yeah. I feel like you see it and that's what's so frustrating is if you couldn't see it at all, I don't think you would have stayed around you with no. anything else, but you see something, you see at least opportunity. Yeah. You see it start gelling together. The plan starting to take shape and joy. And again, Al, Paul Allen and so many other people that I could go on the list for days that are, you know, seeing this vision of themselves. Now we got to have that shared vision and that's where it becomes like bigger than ourselves because these project dollars that they're putting out there just to put out there. If you look it up, it's the, uh, I don't remember what it is. I'll, I'll put it on the screen later, but it's, it's three, $400 million. But if you have a project under 5 million, which sounds like a lot of money is nothing in construction is nothing in that type of development. Now all of a sudden you got to take multiple $5 million projects, $2 million projects and lump them together. So you can get to the 20, 30 and $40 million dollars for it to even make sense. Yeah. Because the minute that you have too many split up projects, the dollars won't even make an impact mm -hmm. on the people that they're supposed to impact. Yeah. It's just the math doesn't math. But anyways, that's, that's my nerd talk on there. But, uh, <laughs> uh, what I want to say is like, I couldn't, I couldn't say it any better than what you've said it. And, um, anything else you can say that like you want to see, um, come out of a, a place. Cause you've talked about the, the thing that you brought up at our lunch was the idea of different dance studios and how mm. important that is for the culture. Yeah. Tell me about that one. Um, so we have, we've had studios. We have a couple of dance studios sure. within the black community. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment there are three black Four are black owned, but three of them are in North Omaha. Okay. One of them is not. Okay. Um, now, if we, when we go further with my numbers, there are one of them. There's another one that's, <laughs> it is a hip hop based dance studio. There are two hip hop based dance studios that are not black owned. Okay. Um, well, actually, well, 
I can ask you this because I just want to be sure. appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. This person, he is biracial. So does okay. that make it black owned if he owns it? Would, it? Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Right, so because I'll see. tell you what, if we get pulled over, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to say, oh, no, no, you get a pass. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, and I haven't met this gentleman yet. Yeah. Uh, but I know he, right now he that. has, um, his studio literally just launched like okay. a couple weeks ago. So okay. shout out to Heartland Hip Hop. Um, but it's way out in Millard. Okay. 178th and something. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Whereas the black community. Spreading the culture, you know, hey. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But there's a, there's a certain community of people that are going there. Sure. That, you know. And, and North right Omaha of, is red, red line and everything else pushed it that way. Exactly. But if you start looking at the numbers, we're less than 50% now of African American true. in North Omaha. So we're in a lot this of places. I start going way out west and I'm looking around and I'm like, it's kind of exciting. I'm yeah. like, all right. It's, it's so true. the new Omaha is, the new is Omaha. happening. Which is good. I, I think for me, it's like but being able to go to those spaces, even if it's not a central area. Yeah. Like, and I'll get back to the dance thing really quickly. Sure. Um, but I just feel like we don't, there's not a central place where I, like, where I can go and just say, okay, I'm going to see black people here all the time. No. Like, I want 24th Street to be that because it's, on, it's the closest thing that we have. Sure. Sorensen, you know what I'm saying? That Sorensen Parkway District where there should have been a bunch of businesses over there for black people to just go and hang out and do the things. We had the movie theater, we had the restaurants, we had the shopping, but for whatever reason, it just, the the rent is too high. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now when it comes to these dance studios, we are literally, when it comes to everything, like even with ballet, like ballet obviously doesn't come from black people, but we do have a, a presence in it. Um, mm -hmm. Modern dance, you got Alvin Ailey, you got Catherine Dunham, you got, um, Oh, Jesus, Lester Horton. He was a white man, but he created it and it was beautiful on black bodies. Okay. Catherine Dunham, um, right. Jesus, Carmen Delive a lot, all these different black pioneers in modern dance. You have jazz. Jazz comes from black people. You have West African, sure. obviously hip hop, all these different styles. So at my studio, AP Legacy Dance Studio, where I'm teaching at, shout out to yes. Aunt Phyllis Hicks, yes. um, who's the studio's named after. We teach ballet modern slash contemporary hip hop and jazz. And we try to teach them historically so that our kids, our black and brown babies are getting the history of dance. In addition to the technique, um, Shankita, she's teaching major red, um, shout out to Natasha, uh, Partridge Butler, who is mm -hmm. the owner, um, and CEO of, um, pear tree performing arts. They are also teaching ballet, um, jazz, hip hop, modern. They also have a competition team. Um, so all these other studios, um, they're teaching dance and preserving the culture in a, a different way. But if I give true, a true nod to those who are the most connected to the culture mm -hmm. would be the community dance teams, because that's what Omaha has grown to know mm -hmm. and love are the drill teams yep. are like Salem marching, the uh, the Panthers, all yep, those different yep. groups is what those people have grown through generations. That's what they're sending their kids to because that's what they know. So the studios are suffering because this is something brand new. Sure. We don't have, sure. you know what I'm saying? Like, so now creating a studio space or a genre space where not only kids, but young professionals, like that's where my heart beams. Like our young professionals that want to be in dance, they have to, they, they, they just sit and dream of going somewhere else because maybe they didn't have the training. Mm. So they want to, they want to explore it, but there's no spaces for them sure. to go ciphers, you know what I'm saying? To go yeah. freestyle battle, to sure. go to perform and to go watch other dancers perform. There's no spaces for us to do that right now. So we're trying to build that my peers and I are trying to think of ways to start creating that, you know, through content creation, through whatever, sure. because sure. it's happening elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? But here it's just like, how do we do that? Good question. So, you know, uh, the last thing I'll say before we get out of here is that having all of those rich, cultural, influential people um, who have uh, been the pioneers, have been the innovators behind arts and dance. You know, even if they have their own dance studios, having a destination that's tied into uh, kind of putting a spotlight on a lot of the work that they do by being content creators, or again, you know, it's, it's so difficult to be a dancer and then having, again, I need someone to run the camera. I need someone to capture the magic. But if you got a bunch of kids who are running around and they want to capture the magic, they want to be the magic captures, but they don't want to be the dancer having that all together and having that all in one space in place. All of a sudden you can imagine 
the level of like kind of impact and worldly kind of, um, uh, kind of magnetism that will happen towards a space in a place like this. So we got to build the people. The people are here. We got to yeah. just find the the kind of the the place to grow them. Um, but I do thank you for kind of sharing your vision, your experience. Um, we got a lot more to talk about, but I'm so happy to run into you, man. Yeah, yeah thank it's you. exciting. Yeah, man. Thank you for bringing me in to, you know what I'm saying, to talk about these things and yeah. just to connect. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I've mentioned you before. I don't, I don't, I didn't really see a lot of men, black men like us, mm -hmm. first of all, growing up, but sure. then to come back home and, you know, it's just, it's a different for people who've been here versus people who've gone and lived elsewhere and come back. There's a different, there's a different connection that I have with those who've lived elsewhere and have come back boomerangs, if you will. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. like there's a yeah. different connection because we have a little bit more, um, experience in other places, but to just be in the same wave of trying to uplift and shift our culture forward. Um, I appreciate just meeting you and being able to have these conversations with you as well. Man, thank you so much, Aaron, thank for saying you. that, man. I appreciate that. Um, well, uh, we'll be talking more, but uh, appreciate it again. Talk soon, man. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs>